This time on Engine Masters, we are gonna test a whole bunch of rocker arms to find out if a roller rocker is worth your time and money. All right, this is Engine Masters presented by Amsoil and the episode where we ask, is a roller rocker arm really worth it? Now the thing is, this is also the episode that you overhead cam guys are gonna hate because your engines don't have these. So maybe I should explain to you what they do. The rocker arm is basically a little implement of leverage that is the thing that opens and closes the valve. You start down here with the camshaft rotating and then that translates lift through the tappet, through the push rod, right here into the rocker arm, which multiplies that lift, usually by a ratio of about 1.6 to 1.7 to one, and opens and closes the valve. The thing is, there's a lot of aspects of the rocker arm that can affect performance, and that's what we're gonna find out here today. Now, the engine I chose to work with runs to 7,000 RPM, and the reason for that is is if we're gonna see anything as far as improvements from frictional loss in any of these rocker arms, we're gonna see it at higher RPM. If we don't see any improvement at higher RPM, you can pretty fairly conclude that it's not gonna have any effect on your engine that only runs say 5,800 or 6,000 or something like that. But the engine I chose is actually pretty wicked. It's a 372 cubic inch small block Chevy. It's got stuff like a single plane intake manifold, big AFR 195 heads. It does turn 7,000 RPM. So we're gonna find out what that kind of RPM does to all sorts of different rocker arms, starting off with that stock type stamp steel unit. We're gonna bolt these onto the engine, roll it into the dyno, fill it up with some AMS oil and fire it up. So much of the test that we're doing today has to do with friction because that's what you're eliminating or reducing when you're putting in that roller bearing inside a roller rocker arm. The thing is, I don't really know if we would see more of a difference here if we were running conventional oil, but I don't want to do that anyway because we always run this thing on synthetic. Today we're going to be putting in the Amsoil Z-Rod 2050 and I'm really looking forward to it because with my clear valve cover, I can watch the oil slurp down into the engine. Okay, we're set for our baseline, the very first run with the scrub rockers. I think it's a little unusual to use a stamped steel rocker with a cam this big. I never have. Never seen it, right? <laughs> this is my first time. One thing cool about these rockers is when I was assembling it, it was a 716 stud, and I thought, God, we may have a chance on this thing staying on. <laughs> I put some poly locks on it, you yeah. know, got rid of the nut, jam nuts, and put some poly locks on it, but it's, it's cool that it has a 716 stud. He's talking about the stud that the rocker arm goes on in a small block Chevy can either be a 3 8 or 716 diameter, and obviously you'd rather have the 716 when you're dealing with this yeah. stuff because 3 8 flexes to the point of snapping off. Yeah, 7,000 RPM in this much cam. Yeah. But there are classes that call for a stamp steel rocker. Yeah, circle track tracks. stuff. I think yeah. that's why these Howard's stamp steel rockers exist. Probably but why they exist. Even though these are aftermarket, I would say that what we're about to do test-wise here is the same as if a guy had just got the stock rocker arms off his engine, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's yeah. nothing unique about it other than it's just beefed up a little bit, which is... Cool. How about the size of the ball? The, the OD of the ball is the same size regardless of the ID of the hole for the stud, right? You know, I haven't measured the ball diameter. Right. You know, with the, 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 yeah. the center hole is obviously bigger and the stud is gonna have to have, or the rocker is gonna have to have a little wider slot. Yep. So it may very well be that it's got kind of a cup of a big block and the ball of a big block with the ratio and length of a small block. Right. It, it, like I say, it's kind of a cool rocker. And they sell this in a 1.6 too, even though we got 1.5s on it now. Excellent. And the long slot's also a consideration if you've got a lot of lift, because yeah. you've got to make sure it doesn't bind up. Yep. Or that could be catastrophic. So those are gonna win. We haven't been there yet, but we're about to see 7,000, so. Yep. <laughs> you think this fine. thing's ready to go? Yeah, it's perfect temp. Okay, we already have a tune-up on this thing, so this is just gonna be one or two pulls for our baseline. Then we'll get to throwing some other junk at it. So 
nice little motor. Yeah. You see, what's kind of nice is I already know what it does with roller rockers because oh, we've had okay. them on it. And, he and always so cheats. I know. I, I always knows. I, I won't reveal that, but this is pretty good. Yeah, yeah it is actually, good. Actually, it's pretty good. Yep. I mean, we got a 500 horsepower 372 with stamp steel rockers. Uh huh. So we just made 470.3 pound-feet of torque at a big 5,000 RPM, and way up here at 6,600, it made 508.8 horsepower, and it's a beautiful thing. That's all we need to know. We're gonna go in there and throw on the roller tip. Well, that was pretty cool, but I know what you're thinking. Where did he get those transparent valve covers? Yeah, those are pretty cool. They're made by a company that's called Clearview Concepts, and I bought them through Classic Industries, and I know you need a set. Actually, you're gonna find ours leaking everywhere because we had to double stack the gaskets on them. So if you buy them, I recommend buying thicker gaskets than what the company actually recommends. Next, we're gonna talk about the six ways that rocker arms can affect power. Number one by far is the rocker ratio. In other words, how much they amplify the lift at the cam to the lift at the valve. For example, the stock Chevy is 1.5 to one ratio. Aftermarket frequently has a 1.6 to one ratio, which actually small block Fords have that stock. So think of it this way. If you have 500 thousandths lift at the camshaft and multiply that by 1.5 to one, that means you have 750 thousandths lift at the valve. If you multiply it by 1.6 to one, you have 800 thousandths lift at the valve. That's a big difference and it contribute to airflow. Number two, friction. Think of this, at 7,000 RPM in a four-stroke engine, this rocker arm has to open and close the valve 58 times per second. And with the camshaft lift we're running today, that means the tip of the rocker arm is moving at almost five feet per second. You would think that would add up to a lot of friction, especially on the stock rocker arm with this kind of ball. And so you'll see a lot of advertising that says that the roller trunnion in a roller rocker will eliminate that friction and therefore make more power. Number three flexibility of the rocker arm itself. If you have a flimsy rocker arm and a lot of valve spring pressure, it can actually bend the rocker dynamically while the engine is running, which reduces lift at the valve, which ends up costing you power. The same is true of number four, which is stability of the way the rocker arm is mounted. On a small block Chevy, typically it's on a stud like this. This is a 7 16th inch stud. This is a 3 8 3 8 is flimsier. 7 16 is stronger. There's also ways to convert these to a shaft rocker and other ways to just stabilize the rocker itself because if these start to bend and lose control, you lose power. Number five is weight or inertia. If the pivoting part of the rocker arm is really heavy, that is part of what the valve spring needs to control. And if it's heavy, it can end up leading to stability problems. In other words, floating the valves and that can cost power. And of course, number six is straight up reliability. And that's a big deal with rocker arms. If one fails on you, obviously you've got a dead cylinder. Here's the first rocker arm that we just tested. And we were pretty impressed with it because while it looks like a bone stock Chevy stamp steel rocker arm, it has some significant upgrades from Howard's cams. First of all, it uses the larger than stock 7 16th inch stud. That means it's got more valve train stability than the flimsier 3 8 stud and we think that helped it a lot in this particular application. Now in order to be able to survive with a camshaft like we're running today with a lot of lift it's also been modified with a longer slot here at the bottom so that the stud doesn't end up limiting the travel of the rocker arm. So these are 110 bucks and I would say a pretty good deal and super, super simple. Those are from Howard's Cams. Now let's talk about the next three that we're gonna test, which all fall into the category of roller rockers. This particular one would be the poor man's roller rocker because it only has a roller tip. It does not have a roller trunnion. It uses the ball in it just like a stock rocker arm. Also, I shopped around a lot and I could not find a roller tip only rocker rocker arm that use that big 7 16 inch stud. So this one takes the tiny 3 8 I got a trick, super strong 3 8 stud from ARP 
to do my best to try and stabilize the valve train. We'll see what happens. Now, it's really important for me to point out that this part right here looks a lot like something that you can buy from comp cams. However, it's not. This thing is advertised at 1.5 to 1 ratio, whereas comps are 1.52. And that's why I thought this would be a more realistic comparison with the other stuff we've got going. However, this thing is cheap. I might have made a mistake there. Next up is the full roller rocker arm, which means it has a roller on the tip and a roller here at the pivot or trunnion. Now, when shopping for this thing, I really wanted something that was a good value. This is 257 bucks. However, I wanted to make sure that I did not get a cheap import knockoff because from experience, I can tell you those break and when they do, the little needle bearings go all through your engine and turn it to trash. This Scorpion is made in USA. Other good quality made in USA rocker arms will come from companies like Comp Cams, Crane Cams, stuff like that, and they are more expensive. I never used these Scorpions before, so we'll find out how the reliability is, at least here on the dyno. Now, this one is 1.5 to 1 ratio. The last rocker arm that we will test is also a Scorpion. It's exactly the same, but it's a 1.6 ratio for more valve lift. So, next up, we're gonna burn through all three of those rocker arms on the engine and find out which one is best and which is worst. Okay, ready to go with the roller tip rockers. What do you think it's going to do, Freiburger? Zero. <laughs> so you're saying this is going to make a difference? Well, I think the 3.8 stud negates anything the roller tip may okay. add. <laughs> what do you think, David? Zero. Zero? Zero. It'll be great if it loses power. That'll really be awesome. That'll definitely tell us that it's the, the flimsy stud. Yes. I wanted to see one break and fly through the clear valve Some, cover. Somewhat adequately, but I, I think... Uh... Let's look. Wow. Oh, wow. boom. Yeah. So the red line shows us that the stock stamp steel rocker arm actually made more power from 5,000 RPM on up. And our theory is that that's because that smaller stud is flopping around. I would almost bet because, you know, down here it's not, but with that more and more engine speed, it just gets worse. And it's, I yep. think there's just a ton of deflection. That's all stud. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, I think it's still a fair test on the roller tip because you can't buy it for a 7 16 stud, at least that I found. It and so what that's is. what you put up with. Yep. And I think this tells you, though, that even if you have a 300 horsepower 350, that rocker arm's not doing anything for you. I agree. The only point yeah. though is I noticed that like Comp Cam sells these and in their advertisement, they don't say it makes power. They say that it improves valve stem tip wear. And that's certainly a possibility. There's no rubbing. But now let's throw the roller rockers on and it's gonna let's be the power. Wheels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Well, here's your final answer on the roller rocker. Didn't make any difference whatsoever as far as improvements. It was actually worse way up here in the top just by a few numbers, but that's probably because the rocker arm is heavier and we're creating a valve spring control problem up there, which is only gonna get worse when we go install the one sixes right now. And those will make power over here, but probably get way worse. Are you there. sure? I'm sure of nothing. <laughs> okay, I ready? I think the one sixes are gonna be better. One of the things you need to make sure of when you're installing any of these roller rockers is that you get the trunnion the right side up. If you look in there, you can see that it's flat on one side, which is where the polylock seats on it. Whereas if you flip this thing over, it's not machined flat and this doesn't fit right. We call them lightning lash brulee. No one can go through 16 valves quicker. A lot of times what you'll see guys do is they'll pre-adjust the valve and then they'll try and use the set screw to jam it. And what you frequently find is the rocker arm comes loose. So what I do is I'll bring it down basically to zero 
I'll put a quarter turn preload in it. And then I tighten the jam screw and then tighten them both together. That absolutely ensures that that's locked. It's a little more tedious with a solid lifter camshaft because you've got to find that spot where you've got the right lash and it's jammed. But it's time well spent because otherwise you end up with a whole bunch of studs coming loose. If I wasn't a fan then, I am now. You are? <laughs> that was significant. Yeah. That wow. was really good. You know what it is? It's that airflow research head. It likes the more lift more because lift. it's going to move more air. Yeah. In the end, the 1.6 roller rocker made 473 pound-feet of torque at 5100 and 526 horsepower at 6700. And what's the overall gain compared with the 1.5 to 1? <laughs> Huge. Horsepower it made 20 seven. horsepower by changing the ratio from 1.5 to 1.6. What we're looking at here is our worst curve in black, which is the roller tip only rocker arm, and then the best with the 1.6 full roller Scorpion. Yeah, that's, that's just a ridiculous. huge difference. Yep. And the, the price difference is 150 bucks. It's $110 at Summit for the roller tip, and it's 257 for the full roller. So. so if you've got the cylinder head, a 1.6 is definitely an advantage. Yep. Cylinder head and valve train, that, that's a lot of power for 100 bucks. Well, and reliability. Wouldn't you say the active ingredient there is not so much the roller, but the ratio? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's 100% yeah. the ratio. Perfectly clear on that. Yeah, that's the biggest thing about it. So if you've got the valve spring for it, the coil bind clearance for it, the valve to piston clearance for it, the push rod clearance for it. Cylinder head for it. The cylinder head for <laughs> it, then the 1.6 is the way to go. And we happen to have all of those things in order and it made huge power. So now we can go turn the air conditioner on? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about how to apply this to your life and your engine, but first, I want to verify that we did check the rocker ratio on all of these. Sometimes an OE rocker can have less lift than intended because the ratio is actually 1.4 to 1 instead of like 1.5 to 1, but we did verify them all. So let's go into the pros and cons one by one. I think okay. the pros on the stamp steel rocker was that it's cheap and it worked way better than expected. It's really good. But I think the key to that is that 7 16 inch stud. I think on a standard small block Chevy with a 3 8 stud, especially a push in one, this would be a fail. Yeah, and also the poly lock because the stock nut will oh, yeah. back out sometimes. Yeah, you definitely want to run the poly lock on this thing instead of the factory stover nut. And I would also say, you know, we kind of, Worked a miracle here with this much camshaft on a stock steel rocker. If a guy's got an engine over 6,000 RPM, that's probably not his guy. How about pros and cons on the roller tip rocker arm? I can't really think of anything I love about it. <laughs> How about you? Let's think of the pros. It opens the valves. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. How about pros and cons on the full roller rocker? I thought a pro was going to be that it was going to make four or five horsepower, and it didn't. A con is just a little more expensive, but this can take way, way more load than a stamped rocker, especially with high spring loads, big, fast, high lift cams. And so basically what that's buying you is reliability, right? And then the winner, the 1.6 to 1 full roller rocker that gained us 20 horsepower, that's an obvious pro to that one. Doesn't always happen. I know it. I think it's because we have these AFR 195 heads. They were really able to use the extra, whatever it was, 37 thousandths lift. That was a big deal. But For there sure. are significant cons to using this thing too. Yeah, depending on the engine combination, sometimes you can reach instability way faster in the valve train or valve float when you start jacking the ratio up. Because it's accelerating the valve much and faster, but even more basic than that. You have to make sure it fits. Right, this thing has more lift, and so you gotta check everything that you would if you were putting in a camshaft with more lift. We're talking retainer to guide clearance, coil bind, valve to piston clearance, all of that stuff. And it can run into problems like with push rod clearance up against the head. There's just a lot you have to go through to make sure you're totally dialed in if you're using a high ratio rocker, but in this case, 
totally worth it. Win all the way around 20 horsepower. I know it. I learned a lot on this episode, like we always do on Engine Masters, presented by Amsoil. I would love to see one of these break off and shoot through the plastic valve cover. That would ruin the valve the cover. Best. It's, it's worth the $400 valve cover and the $8,000 small block. That's not my small block. <laughs>